I will introduce more about the nitrogen and the phosphor recovery technology we, we developed in WSU. <clears throat> the problem, I, I don't want to introduce more. I think we all know the problem of the nutrients overloading to the field for the cathodes. At the beginning, we tried uh, the first integrated concept, which is uh, uh, most people use, use a flocculent polymer <coughs> to remove the solids. By remove solids, we remove the phosphor. phosphor. Then we add uh, the lime to increase the pH. Once we increase the pH, we can strip out the ammonia, use sulfuric acid to uh, absorb the ammonia to form ammonium sulfate, <coughs> which is a fertilizer. Then I like the, this part. So the, bag, the raw biogas, we can uh, go through this high pH nutrient recovery effluent. By going through this effluent to bring down the pH of the effluent, <clears throat> because the hydrogen sulfide and the part of the CO2 will dissolve the liquid. Also, purify the biogas, remove majority of the hydrogen sulfide, which is, uh, makes the engine more uh, comfortable and less maintenance. Uh, the adjust the effluent, we can go to the storage lagoon, which with this low nutrient. Uh, Effluent we can apply to the field <coughs> without a nutrient overloading. But the main problem is uh, still the chemical cost. We need to add a flocculent, polymer, and also let, add a lime. <coughs> we did some analysis about the cost. The polymer uh, and the coagulant cost is about uh, three dollars per cubic meter of the Affluent, we treated. Um, but uh, you know, <coughs> when you use a polymer and uh, a coagulant, the fiber is not uh, organic, and it's <coughs> sometimes the farmer don't want to apply to the field directly. So we we need to put uh, the the fiber <coughs> the solid uh, to the compost at another cost. So they end up about seven dollars per cubic meter. Uh, the, about uh, 2.6 cents per gallon of the uh, influent uh, oh, cost the of, of the, yeah, influent. So if you're dealing with millions of gallons of effluent. Right. You, 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 know, yeah. the, you know the reason yeah. why, yeah. why, Absolutely. why. Real quickly yeah, yeah. So. This is the cost for the lime to uh, increase the pH. The cost is about uh, one dollar per cubic meter of the influent. So farmer don't want this process because <laughs> it's too expensive. So we try to find the method to remove the uh, reduce the cost. So we when we look into the <coughs> property of the ADL effluent, we notice uh, uh, they are high alkalinity, uh, high CO2 concentration in the liquid, high bicarbonate concentration, <coughs> high ammonium concentration also. So we did some analysis, we, we, we can see it's about uh, 850 milliliter of CO2 dissolved in the liquid. So it's very close to 1 1 ratio. Uh, also, the DIC, the in, dissolved the inorganic carbon, we can see high concentration, more than <coughs> 1,000 ppm, and alkalinity, more than 10,000 ppm. <coughs> also, a higher pH, 7.8. Uh, the ammonia concentration also is high. So, based on these factors, we, we developed this uh, patent in uh, integrate nutrient recovery process, which <coughs> we use the natural property of the 
effluent, try to remove the ammonia uh, and uh, phosphorus. What we do is we first heat the effluent with the waste heat from the engine <coughs> to a certain uh, degree, above 50 degree, degree C. Uh, then we use air directed to aerate this effluent. During this aeration, first we remove the supersaturated CO2. By removing CO2, the pH will increase because the CO2, you know, is an acid, right? Biogas. This is acid, acidic gas. <coughs> when the pH goes up, the ammonia will, uh, ammonium will turn into ammonia. It goes into the gas, gaseous phase. Same process with the prefer. A previous process, we use sulfuric acid to remove the ammonia and uh, form ammonium sulfate. <coughs> so we don't need any, we don't need any chemicals. We don't need any lime to increase the pH. <coughs> also, this this pr previous version, we try to heat and remove the fiber, and later we found out we also can do the whole process to remove the fiber here. Um, also, it's class A fiber. <coughs> uh, another finding is after the ammonia stripping, the phosphor and the fine particles settles much faster than before aeration. The reason is we uh, remove the super CO2, which is these bubbles, we will release from the liquid, we will not attach the solid, we will um, not build up any uh, upward force, floating force to the fiber and solid, so the fiber and solid settle much faster. By natural settling, we can remove majority of the phosphor, like more than 80%. In our lab, we can remove about 90% of the phosphor. So this is uh, some data from this lab study to show how the CO2 release. At the very beginning of the aeration, the CO2 country is high, about 2.8%. Uh, uh, but uh, during the aeration, it drops very fast. <coughs> At the end, it's about uh, 2,000 ppm of CO2 in the exhaust gas. In the liquid, the di dissolved inorganic carbon concentration decreased also very fast at the beginning. That's because <coughs> the CO2 release and the, the bicarbonate uh, conversion. This is the result of, of the uh, pH increase during the aeration uh, at a different temperature. <coughs> at a higher temperature, we get a much higher, a faster pH increase. The final pH can go as high as 9.9. <coughs> At the lower pH, 35 centigrade, it takes much, much longer to increase the pH. The reason is the, the kinetic is, is much slower at a lower temperature. Uh, for the nitrogen removal, <coughs> we can see at high temperature, we can remove the ammonia nitrogen much faster. It's like five hours, we can remove 95% of uh, the nitrogen at a 70 centigrade. At a 55 centigrade, we, it takes about 12 hours. But at a 35, it, it takes 24 hours. It takes much longer. But it can remove. <coughs> For the phosphor after aeration, this all based on uh, 55 centigrade because we think 55 is uh, uh, better because less energy consuming for heat of the effluent, and we don't need a very short time to aerate. <coughs> um, this fifth, out of 55 uh, aeration, we try to let the solid settling. We notice even after. Uh, one hour aeration, we can remove 80% of the phosphorus. 
<coughs> so to remove the phosphor, you don't need to air it too long, which is a good part of uh, all this process. <coughs> so this is a, a explanation for the chemical shifts during the aeration. When we air it, the CO2 will release from the liquid to the gas, which all requires all these chemical equation shift to the right side. So when this shifts, it will generate a hydroxide increase of pH. When pH increase, the ammonium will form ammonia and release to the air. <coughs> so the ammonium will consume the hydroxide, will uh, slow down the pH increase. Just by bubbling air through there. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a bubbling air through the through the effluent. Yeah. <clears throat> so the explanation of the buffer uh, removal, as I mentioned uh, before, it's all because the uh, sus suspended gas and uh, supersaturated CO two. We did uh, the microscope and the nice and we notice this very small gas bubbles uh, in the uh, digest effluent. But after aeration there's no gas bubbles. <coughs> and it said it was much faster. So we we think it's a major reason for the settling. Also other researchers uh, found the because we increase the pH, um, some uh, salts like uh, uh, struvite or um, calcium phosphate will settle much faster. So that's a, maybe another reason is the pH. Uh, we did an analysis of the uh, particle, uh, particle size distribution. This is the effluent directly from the digest. We can see uh, the, from the very fine particles to a larger particles have very wild, uh, very wide distribution. But after aeration and settling, most of the big particle and the part of the small particle will settle. After longer settling, like 30 days, there are very little uh, solids in the uh, upper layer. So the natural set settling is uh, uh, enough to remove the suspended solids. OK, this is another analysis. I don't want to explain too much. Um, shows how this. Uh, space, spaces shift during the aeration. During the aeration, the bicarbonate will keep decreasing. Carbon, carbon the first increase, then decrease for the ammonia and ammonium. <coughs> the ammonium will keep decrease during the whole process, while the free ammonia will first increase, then decrease. So the total amount is, you will see, this is in the log, so it's like 10 times from here to here. So we can see the concentration uh, decrease in, a lot in this process, in, in this aeration process. <coughs> so because the phosphor removed, we don't need a longer aeration time. So there, there are two choices for, for different applications. Uh, some farms, they, have, um, they only have a phosphor problem. <coughs> uh, then they can un they just uh, do a s slow limit time aeration to remove the super saturated CO2, then settle all the solids uh, to remove the phosphor while keep the ammonia still in the liquid to apply to the field. Sometimes they both have phosphor and the ammonia problem, then need a longer aeration time higher aeration rate, and get uh, both ammonia and phosphor removal. So that's a 
need part of this process. So this shows the pilot aeration system. <coughs> 2,000, 5,000 gallon batch runs uh, with the industrial partner. <coughs> this is a pilot performance. For the phosphor removal, we get about 80% which is close to the lab study for the, uh, yeah, this is the phosphor removal. For the nitrogen removal, we can see, also we get a, about a, uh, ninety percent, close to ninety percent, above eighty percent removal. Also we have a, found a similar pH increase during the batch run and uh, we get uh, about uh, 40 to 45 percent ammonium sulfate product. And this is a uh, early economic analysis, um, which shows the total cost and the total revenue. The, the major cost is from the sulfuric acid and the uh, power. <coughs> The revenue mainly from the ammonia sulfate uh, solution and uh, the phosphor solids. So we didn't uh, add the uh, like, like the fiber, like the fiber revenue or carbon credits or really other like it. Uh -huh. Is there a market for nutrient trading credits? I'm not sure. Um, I think uh, if you get the nutrients f not from uh, fossil fuel, uh -huh. you will get a credit. Uh, I remember in in, in Europe. Uh, in Europe. Europe. Credit that you can get that's that's carbon only. I don't know about nutrient. You've seen in Europe there's nutrient. <coughs> yeah. Um, the, the reason is. Uh, I'm not sure if this United have this thing or not. Um, the reason. Maybe in future. The, the reason is. Uh, if you use a fossil fuel to, I mean, uh, do the ammonium sulfate, you need a, a lot of fossil fuel CO2 release, I mean, greenhouse gas re release. Also, when you transport this fossil fuel, this <coughs> fertilizer, also, you need a, the transportation fuel. You're saying, so like, yeah. You know, you feel it takes a lot of. A lot of CO2 to produce right, right. Well. right. If, have you guys started to try doing the uh, calculations or the process to get carbon credits associated with it? Yeah, we did a calculation. I think this is a project uh, called uh, uh, Environmental Friendly Farming. Yeah. <coughs> WC did a um, calculation based on the digest greenhouse, greenhouse gas uh, <coughs> mitigation and also the nutrients. <coughs> but uh, I think there's, not, there's no, I mean, policy to encourage this process. <coughs> but we do know certain states, they, if we, we produce uh, ammonia sulfate in this, I mean, environmental friendly way, the 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 company themselves, they like the big uh, uh, company like uh, uh, Johnson Johnson, <coughs> they will pay more for this product because they want a green product also. Yeah, yeah. So basically, the revenue is a little bit higher than the cost. <coughs> Yeah, the full-scale full system design, uh, we did 
did it at Van Hark and also in Wisconsin. Uh, this is the Van Hark one. I think you have already seen this before. And uh, this one is the winning poultry. <coughs> it's a poultry farm. Right now they build, uh, they produce more than 2,000 gallon per day of the sulfate solution. I think they, 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 <coughs> they get uh, a lot of revenue from this. Poultry has, uh, poultry waste has a much higher ammonia concentration compared to the dairy waste. Yeah. Here is the uh, sulfuric acid loading and the ammonia sulfate discharging port. So it's very uh, convenient for the trucks to load the acid and uh, to <coughs> to load out the uh, they product. Just figure out how to uh, convert the uh, hydrogen sulfide to your sulfuric acid for this thing. Hydrogen sulfide? Yeah, take, is there enough hydrogen sulfide? Yeah, we, 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 actually we did uh, some research and did some lab work. Yeah. Uh, there, there's no, I mean, technical problem to, to convert that. <clears throat> but uh, the mass balance is uh, not uh, encouraging. Yeah. So it's a very little hydrogen sulfide you can recover from biogas. So that's, that's the main problem. Yeah, we, we are doing some research on that. Well, these things are all kind of um, designed to try and limit the hydrogen sulfide as much as possible. You know, limit out those bugs and stuff. You could always take it the other way. <laughs> Start making more hydrogen sulfide. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Excellent idea. Yeah. Yeah. So um, basically, because in you know, the digest we use uh, the biogas recirculation for mixing, I think it's easy. I mean, it's not easy. I think it's uh, reasonable to add a component there to remove hydrogen sulfide before we read those back to the uh, digester. And this so hydrogen sulfide camera to sulfur, sulfuric acid, which can, <coughs> I mean, reduce a little bit of the chemical cost for the process. Yeah, yeah maybe 10%, 10 percent, 10 percent. Yeah, yeah, that's the time. Well, thank you. Any, any question? Um, the Oh, sorry, the, the uh, biochar study that you talked about at the start, has that been published yet, or is that currently being drafted? We're well, still doing the research, not published. Oh, okay, so that's... Okay. Yeah, yeah. Still on lab scale. Right. Trying to understand uh, why. <laughs> on the light metals, you said, like, aluminum is, like, a thousand parts per million. To uh -huh. So it's, uh, you know, ruins it or whatever. And you yeah. said, did you say copper was only 10 parts per million, and then it's, it's bad? Yeah. So it's, it doesn't take much heavy metal. No, no. Now, remember they were talking about, like, they dump the water from, like, the little foot baths and the copper thing. Yeah. It can ups upset a million gallon diagram. Right. You know? Yeah. We, we, it, it, because some dairy farms, they use uh, copper sulfate try to uh, reduce the pathogen in the farm. Yeah, copper Yeah, yeah. 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 Also kills the <laughs> digest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we try to let them shift to other chemicals. Yeah. So is there any type of bacteria that you actually know in, like, introduced into a digester that would Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Just more manure or what? Manure is good Just source. Uh, the manure effluent is a better source. So, for example, if this digest has a problem, we can track effluent from another digest to, okay. to add more bacteria there. Because those, those are, I mean, they're pretty simple bacteria. It doesn't take very much to upset them. 
No, it's very simple bacteria. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's wi widely in the environment, like the uh, like the pond and bottom of the pond. A lot of anaerobic bacteria there. Uh, we can use that also, but uh, we need a concentrated source for <clears throat> for commercial digester like uh, the USB, not uh, treating the uh, solid waste, uh, treating the liquid waste with the water. So <clears throat> they just uh, get uh, uh, animal granules formed in the USB, then track that from one side to another side. To, when they want to start a new digest or they have problem with digesting. That's, yeah, because there's very high, con very condensed bacteria there. Yeah. And that's, the, that's what you want? Yeah, that's what want. You also can put it into the plug flow digest. Oh, Same Craig thing. Freer uh, talked to us, uh -huh. uh, did a lecture. Uh -huh. He said there was something with uh, some of that Greek yogurt in Idaho. Uh -huh. Was that fatty acids that got into the digester then, or was it something else? From Trevon. Yeah, there was, there, a, there was a yogurt factory in Idaho. No, no, no it was the, the um, it was the um, coagulant. They put too much of the coagulant. Yeah, I, I believe that's the aluminum. Aluminum. Oh, that's that would be. A <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, that's a, that's a my guess. I think that's that's a reason. Um, I, I did a tour, I did a visit a, a couple of weeks ago to Wisconsin. They also have the same problem. Mm. The aluminum will upset the bacteria. Not totally killed, but the bacteria's production reduced. Also, the worst part is uh, um, the aluminum <coughs> it, it, <laughs> itself is a, there is a buffer. <laughs> it tried, we we dose into in the, the digest. They will try to <coughs> keep the pH around the, like a seven. Usually we get a pH effluent is about a, close to eight. <coughs> but uh, they notice once they, they dose this chemical, they find the pH decrease, and uh, the biogas production decrease a little bit. And uh, this decreased pH is uh, very um, hard for us to do the next step of nutrient recovery. Because nutrient recovery, we need a high pH to remove ammonia. So this will cause a problem for the following process. So um, I go to their, their uh, wastewater treatment plant. Um, they use a, a lot of aluminum to remove the phosphor. I don't think that's a good way. Uh, try to convince them they shift from aluminum to a ferric product, to iron product. Because iron, <coughs> first iron is not uh, as uh, inhib uh, uh, inhibitor as the copper. Uh, second, uh, when, when, when iron, they use iron, typically they use iron sulfate. <coughs> This, uh, when this goes into the digest, uh, it will form uh, iron sulfide. <coughs> also, the iron is a good source to, uh, to, yeah, to remove H2S. But aluminum is not good to remove H2S. So in their, in their uh, cheese waste water treatment plant, <laughs> What they did is, <coughs> first they add aluminum to remove the phosphor, try to remove the phosphor, because the phosphor causes the, the aeration process problem. So here they get some waste. The liquid go to here, they aerate, try to remove the organic part of the wastewater. Then they get to a settling pond, no aeration, it's anaerobic or exotic uh, process. In this process, they have a big problem because of the odor, the H2S odor. Because they use aluminum, <coughs> the, the, the sulfate from the wastewater, sulfur, will, here will convert to hydrogen sulfide at an anaerobic condition. You cannot go close to the, to the pond. You don't want to, uh, I mean, <coughs> 
go near the pond because it's too much older. And if there's no wind, the, the neighbors complain a lot. And in Wisconsin, they, they, I think in the in US, you can seal, right? seal the, 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 the company if you have the older problem. So they have a lot of pressure here. So uh, right now, they are doing shifting the aluminum to, to, to the iron product and uh, try to do <coughs> remove the H2S problem. Here they <laughs> they grow algae. That's that's the thing. Yeah. <coughs> remove the extra nitrogen and then nit nit nitrite. <coughs> From algae they add the aluminum again. <laughs> Try to separate the solids or okay, to flocculate. So they have a lot of waste with the aluminum. So that's, that way up, upset the digest. You guys have any more questions? Good. Well, thank you for most. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.